Welcome back and uh, thanks for staying with us here on The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next uh, conversation is going to be, um, well, once again on security issues. A uh, Nigerian who has been kidnapped with a 30 million naira ransom being demanded by his abductors. Uh, we're joined by Chukuma Okinwa, a public affairs analyst. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Good morning. Mr. So, Okinwa, can you hear us? Okay, right. so really, we'll try to reconnect with uh, Mr. Okinwa. But, but this story, just to fill you in, so a pastor in a church, a deeper life church in Undo State, his name is Pastor Ogudingbe, you know, just finished a church service according to reports we've seen. And his wife later reported to the police, you know, Mrs. Yinka Ogudingbe, that her husband had been kidnapped. This occurred a few days ago, and now they've contacted the family demanding 30 million naira ransom, and that the amount is non negotiable. They must receive 30 million naira, or her husband and the pastor of this deeper life church in Ondo State would not be released. It's just such a shame the level, you know, that these terrorists and kidnappers are sending to really, like we discussed. It seems crime just keeps going on the rise and it's not coming down. Yeah. From secondary school students to pastors to travelers on the roads to where, where exactly are we safe if kidnappers can go to a church and abduct a pastor? And this is not the first time we're seeing uh, reports of a pastor being abducted right from his own church. Well, um, it's, um, you know, like I always mention, you know, I, I, I personally don't like to um, put a tag on you know, the person who has been kidnapped. So pastor, banker, engineer, lawyer, uh, bus driver, a school student, um, you know, a vice chancellor, whoever it is, it's a Nigerian. Um, so it doesn't make it more shocking because it's a pastor. It doesn't make it more shocking because it's a school, um, it's a university student. It doesn't make it more shocking because it's a woman. You know, these are Nigerians and their lives, you know, should be safe in Nigeria. Um, I also have seen that, you know, it, it feels, you know, like there is uh, people who have taken advantage of the failure of security agencies and the lack of proper security architecture um, in Nigeria. I've taken advantage of that and have gone, you know, into the kidnapping business full time. Um, it, 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 we no longer would, you know, only lean towards saying, you know, blaming headers or bandits for these um, 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 atrocities and, and these acts. Um, it feels now that there is just random persons, random criminals mm. across the country in different states who are not bandits, who are not headers, who are not, you know, from, you know, from, you know, anything linked to the Boko Haram or the insurgents. Just, who just have do just, that. Yeah, just taken advantage of um, the uh, security situation so, in the country. So really... And, uh, mm -hmm. started kidnapping and i've been hearing reports about that you know i don't know how true this is but this is reports i've been hearing that you go for a jog and then somebody just drags you in and yet last night i was taking a walk with a friend and we're about we're passing the walkway and we saw a car parked on the road and we said please let's leave the walkway and come to the main road where everybody can see us yeah. and that's because of the level of insecurity you don't know if that guy is a kidnapper waiting to just swoop in and take you and throwing the boot or if he's just someone who wanted to take the the night breeze and just came out of pakistan so everybody's just not feeling safe in the country anymore and it's just such a shame where we are you know when you talk about all the promises that the present administration has given you know when there's a there's a kidnapped incident when there's something they come out and say this would be the last that would ever happen in the country we, and a few, a few minutes later you hear reports of another very terrible incident nigeria as a country has had years to de to develop to a level where these things would be um, harder to pull off and it would be easier to investigate and to catch and to rescue kidnap victims. We've had years to develop CCTV cameras in every single corner of Nigeria. We are rich enough as a country to have that. We're rich enough as a country to have... Millions um, um, have been disbursed um, for that. Yeah, information technology, science and technology are fully invested into our security system um, 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 as a country. We've had years. We have zero excuse as to why um, it is so easy for a criminal to walk up, you know, in the streets of Nigeria, commit a crime, go home and never be found. As far back as the Jonathan era yes, or administration, yes. the we, millions we, were disbursed uh, to Chinese companies, I remember, to, you know, purchase CCTV cameras and install them on highways. Where are they now? That, um, you're even talking about the Jonathan. I'm, I'm saying we've had years, you know, it could, could have been since 1999, could have been since 2000, could have been any time, could have been even earlier. 
We've had the time, we've had the resources, but we failed to do that. We've had the time also to ensure that every single penny that is um, budgeted for security and for our, our police force gets to the police force is properly utilized. And every single penny that is meant to be used to purchase arms, to purchase uniforms, to purchase vehicles for the police, to buy for, uh, petrol, to floor their petrol stations, to ensure that they lack absolutely nothing to carry out their jobs 100%, um, gets to them. But we have continued to fail to ensure that you know, these funds get to them. Guess for many, what? many years, I'm, I'm just going to quickly mention this, for many, many years, mm -hmm. until date, we continue to ignore the fact that um, billions you know, are budgeted, are allocated, are released um, to the police force. Yet, you still have policemen on the streets begging for 200 naira, for 100 naira. Talking about that particular, just this morning, I was having a conversation with someone how, you know, asking, have you ever seen, not, not, it's not even have you ever seen, but like, just take a look around. There are so many policemen who have been in the police force for years and all they can boast of is one single motorcycle. Yeah. So why would you, why, like, I'm not, it's not justified for them to harass people, but just to say, I understand where they're coming from, that they're in a system that does not even take care of their welfare. So you can understand when they see a young boy driving a car, whether he got that from his fintech company who, that he just sold for billions to a foreign company or to whatever. You can understand where he's coming from when they begin to harass people. Like I mentioned, not I, justified. I don't, not justified, I don't understand not justified in from. any way. My point is... Funds are allocated, like we all know, for, as we see in the budget, for the welfare of these people who should be protecting us. But when those funds don't get to them, you begin to see situations like this. I mean, in a, in a working society, the police should have done what they should to get Ms. Paso Ogenigbe back to safety. But anyway, we have our guest, Mr. Chukuma Okinwa, public affairs analyst, now joins us again. Thank you very much for staying with us, Mr. Okinwa. Yeah, good morning. Thank you so much. All right. What's your assessment of the situation, the abduction of the Deeper Life uh, pastor in Ondo State, Pastor Ogunengbe? It's really very unfortunate uh, that the issue of kidnapping in Nigeria uh, is becoming unbearable by the day. It's not an industry. And uh, according to New York Times, uh, New York Times described that as Nigeria's kidnap for ransom industry. And this industry is estimated uh, that between 2011 to 2020, 13 million pounds have already been paid as ransom. So we see like two strategies that the kidnappers will use is either they are going for high profile persons, high target associated with great organizations, or they are going for students in their numbers. And from the estimate reviews from New York Times, that when they go for a group of students, like at the end of the day, a ransom of about $1,000 is paid for, uh, per student. So it's something that is really very painful. And I, I, I'm not really seeing the body language of the government suggestive of a political will to tackle this menace. All right. Um, um, now, you know, talking about, um, you know, Pastor Guineanbe. Um, it's a sad situation, and um, of course, uh, the average Nigerian doesn't have 30 million naira anywhere uh, to pay ransom or anything. Um, what would you, you know, expect to be the Nigerian government's response to ending kidnapping um, in Nigeria? The, the, the response has not been so imp impressive because we've seen government speaking in hush tones. There have been several cases of kidnap where it's not even clear if the government paid ransom or not. But then, regrettably also, when a Christian is uh, involved in a case like this, we've seen it go the other way, like uh, in the case of that uh, uh, kidnap, uh, which at the end of the day, let Leah still in the camp, all others were released. So it's always been seen, and also like the evangelist, the female evangelist uh, of Redeem that was kidnapped, at the end of the day, she was found dead. So we see, like, in some cases, it could be for business, and in some cases, it could be oppression. So, but I am not satisfied with the body language of the government. It doesn't in any way suggest the government is trying to clamp down on this. Because the simple truth is that when, when kidnappers are caught, why will someone at the end of the day be released without the person facing the dance? If you do the crime, you do the time. 
Hmm. Yeah, but what I'm asking is, what would you suggest should be the Nigerian government's um, response? Because it's obviously okay, a national expect, uh, challenge. What yes. we expect to be the Nigerian government response first. The government needs to, through the body language, demonstrate strong disapproval for things like this. Two, I would expect that the Nigerian government should deploy the full weight of the law when culprits are I mean, culprits are caught. It shouldn't be a situation like you, you, you heard of the case study of when a kid, a kingpin was accosted by police officers and the, 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 the problem that ensued between those officers and the military officers. You understand? There were killings of police officers who tried to intervene in a case of a kingpin that is known to do kidnap as a business. So I expect my like, full weight of the law. And three, government should be able to check the issue of banditry, terrorism, especially as it has to do with proliferation of arms. The rate at which arms are proliferating and large weapons all across the nation, it's really terrific. And the government must, as a matter of fact, do something. All right, Mr. Okinwa, when, you know, the government began to roll out the national identity number, NIN. They mentioned that it would help in stopping crime because, you know, the government have the data of, you know, everybody and they can track and trace. Why is this not being done? Because this man was kidnapped on Monday. It's Friday now. Why is the government not using tools that, you know, they initiate and roll out? to track crime and criminality? Okay, first is that, of course, uh, the NIN process has not been completed. Uh, so I, I, I can tell you that uh, with statistics on ground, there is just nearly uh, 60 million persons that have been captured on that database. What that suggests is you still have a lot of unidentified numbers within the Nigerian states. But we have a unique country before us because it's just like operating a school without registers. How would they have allowed people to get uh, SIM cards, uh, get BVN and all the rest without the basic one, the NIN number, which identifies the person as a citizen? It's a mistake we've made as, as, as a nation, and we now have to deal with it. All right. And um, um, we are also obviously going to talk about um, uh, the fate of um, Saoginei, um, where... Um, over time, we've mentioned about other countries that have placed an outright ban on payment of ransom. Do you think that might be the approach the Nigerian government should take, uh, you know, in order to help us, you know, completely rid the country of kidnappers? Well, like uh, when, when, when we talk about like addressing issue of uh, kidnapping, of course, the carrot and stick approach is advised, especially. Uh, when you consider the fact that if nothing is done in terms of payment of ransoms, the persons actually involved could be killed. And when their lives are lost, whose crime was the fact that they are only citizens of Nigerians? I mean, there wouldn't be any rationale. They wouldn't stay alive to enjoy the lessons probably that we've learned as a citizen by placing a ban on the kidnapping. I think security in Nigeria has always been reactive rather than proactive the true measure of security is intelligence management it does appear there is a complete breakdown in intelligence in our nation i mean how can kidnappers bandits live amongst us or play freely in some cases you know or, 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 or cut away with hundreds of students and i mean there's no trace that really tells you we have a strong challenge in our hands so it's an indictment on the intelligence management of the nation and hence i suggest Government should be more proactive in intelligence management and not reactive. So what can the family do right now? Because, you know, like uh, Osage earlier mentioned, uh, we really doubt the possibility of the family being able to raise 30 million naira, you know, as soon as possible to get their, their husband and father out. So what can they do now? It is the responsibility of a responsible government to secure the lives of the citizens. As a matter of fact, this issue now is an indictment of the government. The government has failed this family. The government has failed this citizen who probably is a taxpayer. And the responsibility, the basic responsibility of government is to ensure the security of lives of the citizens as well as welfare. 
So in a case like this, where the welfare of your family is challenged, where the security of an individual is challenged, it should be the, head, the headache of the government. Notwithstanding, in a case like this, where visibly we don't see government weighing in in all of the cases, the government is choosy when it comes to the cases it has interest in. I would uh, maybe like what the family could possibly do, since the government have shown that they probably don't have all of the things from basic, like we're still talking about earlier case, even the cheaper gears now all has got to be released. So I think the families most, as a matter of fact, security agents advise that people should take security into their hands at this particular point. I mean, you have to be security conscious. You have to do the part you have to do. Otherwise, the life of the person kidnapped could be lost. But I still maintain the government should see it as a matter of responsibility. In what ways do you think Nigerians can uh, be safer, can, you know, develop, uh, you know, better security consciousness um, in the times that we currently are? Particularly now, uh, those of them that um, have children in school, all across, because the issue of insecurity in schools now is uh, spread and wide. It's not just a northern issue. So if your, 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 the, the school that your child attends, it's very far away from the city, I mean, and the school is nowhere secured with presence of security. I mean, at this particular point, such schools should either go on holiday, compulsory indefinite holidays, or parents should be wise enough to withdraw their kids from that school. Because I believe you have to be alive first for you to get that education. I mean, especially like in different parts of that. I mean, as we speak now, Niger, a great part of Niger, is under the control of bandits. And I mean, we can't just allow this to happen or continue in this way. So I think as it has to do with school systems, schools should first reject their security architecture. Let's work with the security, security uh, 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 you know, uh, the agencies. Ensure you have their phone numbers. And when they are challenges, please call. Oh, well, Mr. Kenwa, um, it's not just uh, students that are being kidnapped, you know, Nigerians in general, uh, are dealing with a kidnap pandemic. Um, so if we can describe it as that. But thank you anyway for joining us this morning, uh, all the way from Inigo State. Thanks thank for all you. your time. Yeah, thank you. Good thank morning. You. Um, it's now time to talk uh, sports. Wally Scott will be joining us next to share a little bit of uh, sports uh, updates and, of course, uh, have a quick, beautiful, interesting conversation here on The Breakfast. Good morning.